So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the importance of habits. Then I'm gonna talk about how to get into the right mindset so that you can put these formulas in so that you successfully build good habits and stop bad habits. And then I'm gonna talk about setting up systems of habits instead of goals which means that you'll be happier in the long run. Welcome to The Power of Helping. My name's Ruben Wax and I'm a trainee counsellor and I'm passionate about improving people's lives so that they're then in a better place to empower those around them. Habits, whether good or bad, they make up the building blocks of the key areas of our life, such as our work, our health, our wellness, and even our bank accounts. But how often do we sit down and think, let's plan how we're gonna do these regular daily habits that we do for the vast majority of our lives? So there are a few key concepts to habit building which are absolutely fundamental. And the first of which is that our lives are a lagging measure of our regular daily habits. And what do I mean by that? Where you are now is the result of your regular habits from the last 6, 12 or 18 months. For example, your bank account is a lagging measure of your spending habits. Your weight is a lagging measure of your eating and your exercise habits. Your clutter in your room is a lagging measure of your cleaning habits. So in essence, you get what you repeat. And that's why habits are so important because if you look a year, two years down the line, it's your regular habits that are gonna get you there. So now we're gonna talk about building your mindset where you're gonna be able to bring in good habits and get rid of bad ones so much easier and you're gonna stop beating yourself up along the way, which we all do. The first of which is truly knowing your why. Why do you want to build this habit? And writing it down is gonna be really helpful, but try and not put anything extrinsic like your looks. Try and put something intrinsic. So write, how is it gonna make you feel? How is it gonna benefit you? How is it gonna benefit others? And lastly, before I move on, a really good one is to never miss twice. And that's because over the long run, we are gonna have days where we miss our habits. That's absolutely fine. But by agreeing with yourself that you're never gonna miss two days in a row, it's gonna really quickly get you back on that foothold and get you back into doing the regular habit. Okay, so I wanna share a few more tips which have been absolutely crucial to me building in any good habits. The first of which has probably been the biggest game changer, which is just to start small. And James Clear uses a great analogy, which is if you look at the trajectory of a plane and it changes by two degrees, what happens? At first, not much, but after a few hours, it's gonna be flying thousands of miles away from where it was heading before. You see, we often look too short term, but habits are only effective when we do them regularly over the long run. And so the best way to set yourself up for success with this is to get yourself ready the night before, whether that's putting the yoga mat on the floor, your gym clothes just next to your bed, or prepping some healthy food for breakfast. And so another really solid tip is to put your new habit between two habits which are already fully formed, such as getting out of bed and going in the shower, or brushing your teeth and having breakfast. And then you know that you just don't do the second one until you've done this new habit every day. And I actually talk about this in my meditation video, which I'll put up there in the cards. So if you're trying to build a good habit or get rid of a bad one, let me know in the comments below. It'd be really interesting to see what everyone's working on at the moment. Okay, so how to build a good habit. We're gonna do this by using the formula, the four laws of behavior change. So that is make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. Okay, let's use an example such as going to the gym, but keep in mind your habit that you want to build in. Okay, so the first law, make it obvious. You want your cue to remind you that you're gonna do that thing. So let's say you put your gym clothes and your shoes right next to your bed. And so that stops your brain from having to do any extra working, such as reminding yourself you're exercising or going and getting out the clothing. So the second law, make it attractive. There's a few things you could do for this one, for example, such as working out in a place that you really like, whether that's outside or a gym that you really like to go to. Then you could be doing it in clothes that you really like to wear, and maybe you could do it to music that you really like to listen to. So the third law, make it easy, is in my opinion probably the most important because as humans, we do often pick whatever's easiest. So we may say that we love health and fitness, but then we pick eating a meal and watching Netflix instead because it's just so much easier. So make this new habit as easy as possible, such as 
picking a gym that's on your way to work on the way home. And lastly, you want to make it satisfying. And that's because good habits are tough in the moment, but they give you the rewards in the long run. And so by making it satisfying, at least you're going to feel good on your day to day. So for example, you could keep a journal so you log every single time you've done that exercise and it's going to give you that reward of having done it. So when you go to build in your new habit, which you're inevitably going to spend so much time doing, just take five minutes to go through this formula, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy and make it satisfying and build in your new habit so that it's then gonna last for the long run. Okay, so how to stop bad habits. We're gonna use the same formula, the four laws of behavior change, but we're gonna do it the inverse, the opposite way of doing it. And so that is make it invisible, make it unattractive, make it difficult, and make it unsatisfying. So if you've got a bad habit, such as watching Netflix instead of working, or eating junk food in your cupboards, then making it invisible so that you stop having that cue it's gonna make it a lot, lot easier. I mean, I rarely go out and buy dessert type food, but if I've got some delicious vegan chocolate in the cupboard, you think I'm not gonna chow down in chocolate town? You must be out of your mind. But seriously, if we actually use an example such as we wanna be on our phones less, then making it invisible can be really, really beneficial, such as putting your phone in another room or in a cupboard on airplane mode. So for the second law, make it unattractive. You could, for example, put it on grayscale so it's black and white, and then it's gonna be much less attractive to look at. So the third one, you wanna make it difficult, and such an easy way of doing this is just adding steps. And for me, this has probably been the most important when I've tried to stop bad habits. Just adding steps, such as putting screen time on, so you've gotta put a passcode in to get into apps, or I'll even turn my phone off sometimes so I've got to wait for it to turn on. Or to use another example, if you want to watch less TV, you can take the batteries out of your controller and just put them in a drawer. All of these add steps and it's going to make it much less likely that we just fall into doing that negative habit. And lastly, you want to make it unsatisfying. So you could log every single time you do that bad habit or you could set up an agreement with your housemate or your family that every time you do that bad habit, you have to give one of them £10 for them to spend it however they like. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about is how habits versus goals. So a lot of habit building actually happens around goals. So people will say, I want to lose a stone or I want to be able to run 10K. And look, goals really have their place. They can give you clarity of where you're trying to get to. They can keep you on track when someone comes along with an opportunity. You can say, does that help me meet my goal? But there are a few issues with goals. Scott Adams talks about how if you're, let's say, in a race, you all have the same goal, which is to win that race. Or if you're going up against 100 people for a job, you all have the same goal, which is to get the job. So it can't be the goal that makes the difference. It's the way that the people live with their daily habits that actually get them to succeed in achieving that goal. And another issue with goals is it puts you in this state where you think, I'll be happy when I have achieved X, or I'll be satisfied when I've achieved Y. But the sense of achievement from meeting a goal is so fleeting. When you've met that goal, you can actually feel like I'm done with that part of my life. Like you often hear stories of people training for months to complete a marathon. They finish it, they get through the finish line, and they don't run again for five months. And so this is where one of the most important lessons from Atomic Habits comes into play, which is make your habit your identity. So instead of setting a goal of being able to run 10K, become a runner. Instead of setting a goal of being on a diet and losing a pound, then become someone who eats well. Instead of setting a goal of cleaning your room every two weeks, become someone who keeps their room clean. This way, then you can enjoy the progress as you go along. So you agree, I'm going to be running every day and I'm just going to improve 1% a day. And every day you get the satisfaction from having completed your habit and adding on that 1%. In essence, goals make us feel like happiness is in the future whereas systems and habits make us feel the joy of having them in our lives. So in summary, you've got to put in a bit of time to get yourself in the right mindset so that you can actually succeed in bringing in a new habit. Set yourself up for success with the four laws of habit change and use as many of the tips as possible. And remember just to do the inverse of those laws when you want to get rid of a bad habit. And so if this was a lot of information, I've actually written out a free PDF that you can download, which has most of these tips and I'll put it in the description down below so you can just download it down there. And next week's video is all about reducing anxiety and panic attacks and you can use loads of these habit building exercises to help you in reducing that. And when that's out, I'll also put that in the cards up there. And a big thank you for watching The Power of Helping. If you enjoyed it and you got something from the video, then please consider hitting the like and the subscribe button. And if you know someone that's trying to build habits, share it with them. And I'll see you next week.